people. So this is a review of the L13, the AMD version. So for the longest time, you can only get the Intel version of this laptop. So on a ThinkPad with the Yuga Phone Factor, it's really nice that uh, AMD has managed to put something into the Lenovo ThinkPad lineup. So let's have a look. Generally, build quality-wise, this laptop it is very good. The lid is aluminum, so the base cover, I think, is some form of glass fiber reinforced material. So that um, feels a little bit less premium than the lid. The fingerprint um, marks still gets left very easily on the lid, less so on the base cover. Firstly, the ports. The difference at the moment between Intel and AMD is uh, there's no Thunderbolt 4 on the AMD version, so you get two USB-C ports, Ethernet adapter ports, two USB Type-A and audio jack, as well as the HDMI and micro SD card. We've got the 300 nits display, so it's quite glossy. We'll take a look outdoor in a sec. So we're just outside of the office to um, take a look at the display, how it works um, when you're outdoors. Uh, you can probably see my shirt getting reflected off the screen, which is, you know, it's on the white background, I can see quite a lot. But I think when you switch on to the darker background, you can see a lot less. This is generally okay, the screen, it, uh, there's some brightness and reflection, but I think that's what you expect. But um, yeah, no, it's, it copes surprisingly better than I thought outdoors. It attracts quite a lot of fingerprint when it's off. I have a microfiber cloth um, near you and you can really reasonably quickly wipe it away. Um, the keyboard on this ThinkPad is 1.5mm um, travel. Really decent keyboard. If you want a full typing experience, I find myself to prefer the T14. I would just personally find this keyboard a little bit smaller than what I like. I think the click button, it's quite nice to have that button. Uh, physically, the touch, it could be a little bit more firm to press down. But I think this is something we always had on the L series where the input is not quite as um, given as much detail as the more premium lineup. As a laptop, I would say it's quite normal, it's quite understated. The lid wobbles a little bit more than a regular laptop, but that's only because it has the hinge mechanism needed to flip backwards, so it's perfectly normal. So as a tablet, I would probably say it's not as easy to use as, um, let's say, an iPad, because unit is both heavier and also you're running Windows, so it might not be the most touch optimized experience. So maybe Windows 11 is better. If you hold this laptop in the tablet mode with your left hand, so for instance, if you're right-handed, you probably do this, then you probably want to use your external mouse with your right hand, I guess, sometimes. But the problem with that is you'll find your hand is literally holding onto uh, exhaust. I mean, I guess the alternative is if you hold it like this, which, but it feels awkward because you don't have the bigger grip and sometimes your finger touches the screen, it's not ideal either. At some point they have got to put the fan somewhere and I guess that's not the worst position. As a tablet, it's probably a little bit heavier than um, you'd have liked because I think these days iPad, they're probably under maybe 600 grams, whereas this laptop is more than twice that. They sent us a defective pen, so this is unit specific. It can be replaced under warranty, but it would be nice if that was caught in the quality assurance checks. We're not worried because it's usually covered under warranty anyway, but it's just would be nice not to have had that issue out of the retail unit box. One thing which is quite interesting is that performance-wise, you'll see these vents on the base cover. So when you're in laptop mode, you're um, getting the same amount of air, really, as when it's in the tablet mode. But in either of these cases, um, there's not a great amount of air. As you can see, there's only that much clearance when it's on the table. When we put it on laptop dock, we got probably maybe 10 to 20% higher performance. And also when we stress a laptop, it seemed to crash a lot less. Just to say this laptop only became available, so still reasonably early days for the BIOS. In terms of thermal stability, especially under stress, this is the least stable ThinkPad with 5000 series mobile Ryzen we've seen. When we stress it in either laptop mode or especially in the tablet mode, it tends to blue screen quite frequently and without any notice. This is usually where you expect the laptop to clock down rather than just thermally shut down. But again, this is synthetic workload we use, so it's not exactly representative of 
real world usage, but more work to do by Lenovo here to make it a little bit more stable. Keep in mind, this is a more compact chassis. So we've not had this issue with the P14S Gen 2. You know, this is where the benefit of having a dual heat sink and also a larger chassis to dissipate the heat is. So if you really want to do something heavy, consider getting the T14 Gen 2. We suspect this will probably get fixed. The laptop will probably just get throttled a lot more when it's under stress. But, you know, this is the limits you work with. The thermos, let's start with Firmark. So this is synthetic workload, probably a little bit worst case scenario in terms of thermos. On the left hand side of the keyboard, you can see that well, just under 40 degrees, so it's quite toasty. On the right hand side, oddly enough, it's a little bit cooler, which is nice because that's corresponding to where the fan is. You can see some of the heat redirected onto the screen. I'm not sure if that's going to affect the longevity of the screen, but with the ThinkPad, you tend to get the warranty. So that's a peace of mind. On the right hand side, on the base cover, you can see where the air gets put in quite distinctively on the the right side and also where the air exhausts. You can see quite a bit of the heat building on the base cover on the other side. This is probably because there's only air exhaust on the other side and only air intake on the one side. So whether it's two smaller fans or another air intake that might be helpful, we don't really know. Thermal wise, this is the same workload that we use to test our battery life. So it's a five browser taps refreshing for 30 seconds each. Also YouTube 1080p playing in the foreground. You can see that on the left hand side, the keyboard does get a little bit hot still, not excessively so like the last one. On the right hand side, it's visibly cooler on the keyboard. What's really interesting is on the bottom cover, it tends to be about 35 degrees. So it's more manageable now, which is good. Still couldn't help but think maybe additional air intake in a different position, not on the base cover, would have been helpful. Either that or two smaller fans, like they have on the carbon, etc. When you use a laptop, however, as a tablet, this is where the area for concern is. Look on the right hand side, um, you can see an uh, area that's over 45 degrees. And keep in mind, this is medium workload. It's not the stress test. So you can see that that's exhausting directly onto your hand. If you hold it with your left hand, that's going to be very hot and you can get the hands very sweaty very quickly and not something where you want to put your hand. And also you can see that on the left hand side, you can see where it's quite hot on the screen. That's just under 30 degrees. So it's less problematic. And now when we close the system, you can also see the keyboard and the exhaust. Exhaust is a little bit cooler, but we're filming from a different angle. On this laptop, um, upgradability is limited, so you can change the M2 and uh, you can also change the Wi-Fi card. With the Wi-Fi card on the AMD model, it's swappable, but um, they give you a Realtek card, so not the Intel Wi-Fi typically. It would be nice to have the Intel option as a optional checkout. I would definitely have paid extra. As you can see, the battery is there. It's quite um, large and RAM is soldered on board, so it can't be changed. M2 takes single-sided um, sticks. It's going to let you upgrade quite considerably. Wouldn't suggest double-sided SSD because that would potentially bend your motherboard. As you can see, the fan has a single heat pipe. It's not as um, impressive as some of the do heat sink fans. This laptop relies quite heavily on air being taken in from the base cover and then ventilated out. Potentially useful to have switched to a smaller do fun setup or maybe a bigger heat sink or additional vent. It's just heat dissipation is not the strongest. Looking at the medium RAM battery test, we got over five hours. In some of the tests later on, we managed to get a little bit higher, but there is a deficit. This is because the battery is smaller than the larger ThinkPads. Looking at the 10 minutes of 4K export, the RAM is not upgradable. So it's 16 gig do channel. And as you can see, it's visibly slower than the P14S Gen 2 with the same processor. So you're getting less optimal performance. This was run as over the benchmarks following in the laptop mode on the desk. It's not suspended in the air on a dock. You get more performance when it's suspended in the air on a dock, but that's not really typical usage. The live stream performance is not too different here. Looking at the gaming benchmark, you can see this is where the laptop stacks. It's a business laptop, so it's not a gaming laptop. There's there's no eGPU support on the AMD Mobile 5000 series ThinkPad at the moment. So hopefully for the next generation will change. We'll look at the settings uh, in the next screen. The performance across the board is a little bit below the bigger sibling, especially you can see in Tomb Raider. We have a normally in the bottom right benchmark, it's probably some variation. I think expect a 13 inch chassis to display the heat less well, so expect lower performance. So here's the Geekbench 5 result just in case. You can see the Geekbench 5 GPU here. 
how it compares with the other modus, Geekbench 5 multi-core. Geekbench single core is quite impressive considering, but it's not as much workload to hit the processor with. I think it's in multi-core where you notice um, more limitation. As for the blender, you can see that it's visibly slower than the P14S Gen 2. As for the Luxball, you can see that the performance is higher than the single channel P14S Gen 2. That's basically the T14 Gen 2 AMD, but lower than the channel version of that laptop and that's where it stacks and next to the other ones here's how it does in pass mark we're not going to annotate too much you can freeze the frame and look for yourself and how it compares in the overall score chart in the pass mark this is an individual score in case you don't have glasses with you as for the speedometer it's a similar performance to the same generation of amd not quite as fast similar oh and there's that mac thing Here's a crystal disk mark, just to say Lenovo multi-source is your SSD, so your performance may vary. Expecting these um, um, AMD-based ThinkPads to have a PCIe 3 speed rather than 4. As for the speaker, you get some volume, but distinctively lacking the bass if you compare it to the more premium entertainment laptop these days. And I think it's um, in line with what you expect on a ThinkPad bottom firing, but um, could do with a top firing speaker with uh, better audio in the next generation. Still, it's a more entry range focused ThinkPad, so manage expectation here. Just to wrap it up, so first Yuga based ThinkPad with the AMD Ryzen uh, 5000 processor. I think it's a decent start. This is not really the laptop most people will be buying. I think that will be if Carbon or Yoga had the AMD version, that would be the really exciting thing. Sometimes it costs almost 50% less than, uh, let's say, Yoga Gen 6. So the cost benefit is definitely there. And at the same time, you get that Ryzen level performance. So yes, you make some compromises on the design and slightly heavier laptop, but it's very functional. It's, uh, I think, ThinkPad users sometimes prefer the utility you get out of the laptop over the aesthetics but having said that the x1 line seem to be really aesthetically focused so this is probably for the people who does it work the battery life it seems to be okay it's uh, over five hours in our load test so it's a little bit short of the t14 the amd version but um, i think it's not too far off it and the battery is smaller after all the charging is quite fast i think that's what's um, important as you've seen from our footage when we were outdoors the screen is quite reflective and it leaves the fingerprint um, i think um, sometimes you can probably get a matte coating, I don't know if any exist, but I think that's probably one idea if you need to use this outdoors. 300 nits, we've not had an issue with it. Um, I guess a 250 nits option, you'll probably want to use that more indoors, but I think 300 to 400 nits, it's actually not too much a difference. So um, I think it's good to have a Full HD touch. You know, it's good basics to have in 2021. <laughs> a few things that can be improved. Just a reminder that the RAM on this laptop is soldered, so you get either 8 or 16 gig option, but not upgradable, so make sure you get the right one at the beginning. On the Intel version of this laptop, strangely enough, you don't have a swappable Wi-Fi chip, which is really strange, whereas the Wi-Fi chip is swappable on this one. You can upgrade, um, but they give you a strange one to start with. As for the general thermos, it seems to be workable. Couldn't help but think maybe there could be uh, more air vents here in addition. So put air from the side rather than from the base cover. So it's just when you have it in the tent mode, it, it covers up the base. I mean, not any more than when the laptop's on the desk, but it's just we see the performance drop off maybe 10, 20% when it's in either laptop or tablet mode. So it's strange if the only way to get full performance is really when the laptop is suspended on a dock you're probably using it wrong or maybe there could be a little bit more cooling but that's probably just us no thunderbolt 4 support on this generation it probably puts off maybe five ten percent people but um, really uh, usb-c is um, very decent still so no e gpu support as easily out of these supports because USB-C and no Thunderbolt 4. I think one last point, the case, sometimes it feels a little bit slippery, especially if you, for instance, have to open it from other sides, it just is a little bit harder. And when you try to close it on the tablet mode, you have to keep your finger, grab it quite with care. So if you do it in a hurry, you might find it quite easy to drop the laptop. But I think generally, really quite like it, very utilitarian, very happy with it if I got it. Um, the only thing I'll probably say is we'll probably have edited this out in time, but um, we're seeing more thermal shutdowns on this laptop when we're running synthetic workload than the other AMD ThinkPads we've seen this year. It's just due to smaller chassis, but 
it would be nicer if the laptop was sort of done instead of just suddenly shut. Uh, again, don't know if it's a power delivery issue or if it's a thermal issue, but um, I think very early days for BIOS, so um, hopefully it can be resolved. Thank you for watching. I've gone on a little bit too long, um, but yeah, so if you um, do like and subscribe, that would be um, appreciated.